Now I'll be introducing Ms. Nat, who is going to be our facilitator for this session. Ms. Nat is one of the teachers that heads the EL department at ALA. She is privileged of being raised by two diverse cultures, born in Tanzania and living in Zambia while being raised by her Tanzanian family, which taught her the value of appreciating diversity. Um, her work at African Leadership Academy centers, centers around refining the entrepreneurial leadership curriculum and developing the next generation of ethical entrepreneurial leaders. And in addition to being an educator, Ms. Nat also uses her passions for the arts and design thinking skills to influence the Zambian film industry, where she continues to work towards improving workflow systems in order to produce better quality feature films and documentaries. Overall, Ms. Nat believes in Overall, Ms. Nat believes in following your passion and doing what brings you peace and happiness. Um, Ms. Nat, could you take over, please? Yes, lovely. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, yes, I am Natalia, or otherwise known as Ms. Nat here at African Leadership Academy. I'm from Zambia and Tanzania, and I, I teach in the Entrepreneurial Leadership um, Department. Um, and uh, most of you or some of you might have heard about EL Entrepreneurial Leadership at African Leadership Academy and how, and, and, and you know, and we will dive into it um, once I start my session. Um, I hope everyone's feeling energized and pumped and ready this morning. Um, so, you know, let me not take too much time so we can just kick in and start with our session. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. All right. Okay, can we see my screen? Cool. So, please um I'm just going to be vulnerable with you all and let you know that <laughs> teaching and and running sessions online is not my favorite thing to do. <laughs> because I can never tell if people are following or what's happening. So um, I'm going to kindly ask you guys to engage with me here and um, show reactions, um, raise hand if you want to share or say something. I am going to ask you to read as well. I'm going to cold call some people so I can hear your voice, especially those I can't see. So if I can't see your video, I'm going to at least ask you to read something off the screen or, you know, share something. Um, as we as we go through this session, because I want to make sure everyone is present, um, following and understanding what's going on. So um, just, you know, give a reaction if you can see the screen, if you can hear me clearly um, before I actually begin with the session. Any thumbs up? Any? All right. All right, the screen is clearly visible. Lovely. I don't have any audio. Wayne has no audio. Wayne, maybe if you're using earphones or headphones, you might want to um take them off or, or just use the, the 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 speaker on your device. Um so here at African Leadership Academy, one thing we truly believe in this quote. Um, it is plastered somewhere or all over the campus somewhere. <laughs> um, it says that never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, is the only thing that ever has by Margaret Mead. And we do acknowledge this. And I hope we all believe that um, in ourselves as well, in our ability to um, bring about positive change through doing exactly what we love and what we're passionate about. So... I will start by taking us through the objectives of today's session and basically what my aim is in terms of delivering this session with you on purpose. Um, at the end of this session, I'm hoping that you guys have a better understanding on why we choose to focus on entrepreneurship and why we believe that entrepreneurship is fundamental for growth, why we want, we want you to also um, be more aware um, of yourself and understand yourself and your personality. Um, at the end of the session, I would also like for you guys to be able to define or um, 
per se, what your personal mission or goals are based on what we call picks. We'll dive into that shortly and the strength test that you will be taking. And then, um, yeah, being able to articulate what kind of leader you want to be. And I think these are very important in terms of uh, in, in relation to us finding purpose and understanding who we are and what we want to do, what we want to achieve, right? So um, the first activity, obviously, if you're anywhere, um, I would like to give you like 90 seconds. I have a time on my phone. I don't have a time on the screen. Um, I'm going to give 90 seconds um, for you to be able to go and find a random object around you. I don't know if you're at home or you're if, if you're in an office space or wherever, find a random object near you, a random object that you think can describe you or who you are. It can be a pencil, it can be a book, it can be a piece of paper, it can be a leaf, it can be a piece of grass, I don't know. So you have 90 seconds starting now, you can get up and go find um, an object that describes or you feel will describe who you are. Starting now. Sixty seconds left. Okay, 30 seconds. Do you have an object? Do you have an object? Did you find an object? Just under 30 seconds. Yeah. Panache, did you find an object? Wayne, did you find an object? Habiba, did you find an object? All right, and time is just up now. All right. Cool, lovely. So if you have that object with you, hold the, I want I want to see what objects people have. So if you if your camera is on, please let me see. Just hold your object up. We're not gonna explain it yet. Okay, I'm seeing plants, I'm seeing a sticker, is that a fridge magnet? Okay, seeing a phone, a paintbrush on a paper. What else is there? Richard, what is that? I can't see the wallet. Okay, but now she has a pen. I see calculator. Ooh, what is that? There's a vial or something Mohammed's holding there. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I'm glad everyone got an object. So hold on to your object, okay? You'll need it. You will need that object very soon. Um, so hold on to your object, and then we will proceed with our um, session. So um, going into the session now entrepreneurial leadership, which is what I teach here at ALA. And I want to dive into why we focus on entrepreneurship and why we focus on entrepreneurial leadership as a whole. Why is this important for us? Why is this important for Africa, right? Um, and why do we focus on it? Well, here, one of our ALA's founding beliefs is that entrepreneurship is fundamental to growth, right? Um, does anyone want to read for me, please? Anybody? Because I don't want to read what's on the screen. <laughs> Oh, Shams, you can, can read. read uh, oh, yes. Okay, go ahead. You want to go first? Yes, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, read. David. Okay. Entrepreneurship is a fundamental to growth. Africa needs entrepreneurial leaders across all sectors who will throw off the constraints of existing institutions to change the paradigm and create value on the continent. Most entrepreneurs in Africa today are subsistence entrepreneurs with small businesses and meager to income that allow them to support only their families. To break the cycle of poverty and generate significant growth, however, Africa needs large-scale entrepreneurs, early funding. Yep. Thank you, Dawit. 
just as as Dawid has read it. How do you guys feel about that? This statement. Do we agree? I'd like to hear from at least one person. Do we agree or do we feel like mm, I don't know about this? Shams, were you going to say something? Oh. Or or how do people feel about this statement? Do you agree, disagree? I want to hear from you guys. Well, hey, okay. Yeah. Mm. Who's that? Did, oh, anyone, yeah. did anyone want to say share what they feel, how they feel mm -hmm. about this statement? Do we feel like Africa does need entrepreneurs or that entrepreneurship is fundamental for growth? Mm -hmm. I saw a hand somewhere. Uh, for me, okay. uh huh. Go ahead. Okay. For me, I guess like the funding belief is really correct, which is about the entrepreneurs because like I believe entrepreneurs are like incredibly important for Africa's um economy economic growth and development because mm -hmm. like entrepreneurship plays a crucial uh role for example in job creation innovation and overall economy growth in the continent so um by starting new business mm -hmm. entrepreneurs not only you know create job opportunities for themselves but also for other uh, people in their communities so i think this really helps to reduce the unemployment rates of the poverty level in the region and uh, boost the economy of the country in different uh uh the dynamics of uh the country's path yeah that's what i believe so entrepreneurship is um a really really uh good issue that uh, uh like africans should work on lovely thanks david um agreed and then i'll throw it over to um richard your hand is up yeah um Based on this statement, like it's so insightful in the first place, and it talks about like we have people that are doing this kind of entrepreneurial business, but they just am let me say a little bit of income that will be able to sustain their families. And if we are looking at entrepreneurial general scale, then I think Africa entrepreneurs also have to be on Forbes list. Some of them should be um, like known, they should be well known across Africa and beyond. And so entrepreneurship is fundamental to good. I think, yeah, it really makes a lot of sense. Hmm. Thank you, Richard. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Um, then we'll go to Jumana. So I think that I totally agree that we need in Africa more entrepreneurs. And so uh, I have believed in this and I believe that entrepreneurs here in Africa, they are really inspires me. So I tried to make comic books for kids that telling stories about African entrepreneurs. And when I did this, I found that Africa contained a lot of entrepreneurs that made a huge impact in their um, countries. And I think that we need to listen to these stories so we can build more entrepreneurs in our countries. And mm. I think that when we do a passion businesses, um, like something we really care about it, it, it brings up that we break the cycle of poverty. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Jumana. Yes, 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 yes. Agreed. And thank you for sharing. And then uh, over to you, TK. I wanted to ask something. Shams for highlighting that as well, right? And then we're gonna go into why, yeah, why we focus on entrepreneurship. I'm um, sorry, TK. As well, you can go as well. Thank you, Shams, for sharing. Um, like there's an article. Can you hear me? Yes. Can okay. Hear there's an article that I read. Right. It was written by a friend of mine, who's at Stanford. He was like, Africa is a lot of entrepreneurs. Um, saying that 
we do not have large scale entrepreneurs, but we have what are called entrepreneurs, lifestyle mm-hmm. entrepreneurs that like with what was said in the statement, I think I 100% agree to it and actually added 10% to the statement, which I think, you know, like we, we do not have um, entrepreneurs that have a philosophy behind what they do, right? Because I believe philosophy transcends time, culture, and philosophy. That's why we believe in the why of Apple, the why of Amazon, the why of Uber, right? So mm. in Africa, we only have those lifestyle entrepreneurs that don't then cascade to this philosophical, you know, uh, of getting, like having a reason of, why, of what you want to do, the golden mm. sake of the why, the what, and the how, you know. They want to sustain their families and stuff like that. And then the last bit is like I was arguing today with a friend of mine. We're saying that like we have a consumer mindset and we like consuming stuff, right? Mm. Uh, we're talking about TikTok that someone can spend four hours on TikTok, but like the, the founder himself shows it true, doesn't even spend much on the platform. And that says mm. a lot about us, you know, uh, consumer mindset versus the producer mindset. I think that's my take on that. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you, everyone, for uh, taking the time to share. Um, I think we all do agree, and I, we, and I think we all do believe that entrepreneurship is fundamental to growth, especially for the African continent, right? Um, and so, again, going into why, right? I'm quickly going to run through some of the things that, you know, highlighting some of the issues, right? So, first and foremost, I mean, African continent is blessed with a large population of um youth under the age of 30. That means we are a continent filled with young people who are willing and able to learn, grow, and develop this continent. And having a large population of young people is an advantage for our continent, right? Um, however, this continent is has many problems. And our problems are go as far as and wide. I mean, first of all, starting with just uh, general access to electricity, um, high unemployment rates. I mean, example of just South Africa on its own um, with such high numbers of unemployed um, youth. And then looking at the fact that, oh, I think my slides were a little bit too, I should have worked better on these slides. But basically these stats just show that we also have issues with our leadership in the continent where we have a lot of um, leaders who have served for quite a long time. So we have a problem with leadership. We have a problem with, um, however, we do have a lot of young population and young people who are driven and motivated and willing to learn and who wish to grow and uh, develop their communities, their continent, and just, you know, the sense that their well-being on this continent. Um, so at ALA, we focus on EL, one of our fl- it is one of our flagship uh, programs here. Um, students spend a lot of time engaging in in entrepreneurial leadership where um, they get to learn how to um, basically uh, use design thinking and um, identify problems and come up with solutions uh, that are human-centered, right? With the aim of being ethical entrepreneurs and developing an entrepreneurial mindset um, in whatever sector it is that you're passionate about. And it's lovely to see all of you here and I'm getting a sense that we are we all have passions in different areas. And today, um, we will be diving into our passions, right? So starting with the fact that first, yeah, Africa needs entrepreneurial leaders across all sectors right and I believe that you guys represent that as well Um, everyone here is an entrepreneur or has run a business or runs a business or runs an initiative or something that they're passionate about back in their communities right Um, so um, ALA um, manages to try and tackle this issue and uh, try and tackle uh, raising uh, young ethical entrepreneurs through different means We have build in a box camps that take place. Um, If you have engaged with any ALA students before in your communities or with ALA before, you might know about build in a box camps where students at ALA get the opportunity to come and transfer this knowledge in their communities by hosting camps 
We also have the African Leadership Model African Union, ALA-MAU. Um, this allows young Africans like yourselves who are interested in politics and governance to engage in Model African Union Conference. We also have the Anzisha Prize where they focus on um, celebrating and empowering young African entrepreneurs. Um, then we also have Global Scholars Program, which also happens on the ALA campus during our holiday breaks between um, June and August, um, where students get to come here to engage in African uh, in the entrepreneurial leadership um, curriculum. So we are trying to tackle this problem and you know um, develop young ethical entrepreneurs in different ways. And South African Ideas Festival is also one of those ways. Um, yeah. So today we're diving into purpose and self exploration. Um, this is one of the first units that ALA students get to engage in when they come here. Before you dive into tackling problems, design thinking, understanding how to come up with solutions um, in your for problems you've identified in your community, we believe that it is important for you to be able to focus on your self-development as well. Explore yourself and understand your purpose, your mission. What are you passionate about? what do you really want to spend most of your time doing, right? Um, and why? Why are you passionate about certain things, right? And how can you set goals um, that align with your personal mission, right? So let's get into it. So before we start, we're going to go into a high five strength test. Um, usually we have personality tests, um, but today we're going to do a high five strength test. Now this test, I'm gonna send the link in um, our chat here. I'm just sending the link to everyone in the chat right about now. And when you do this strength test, you well, it's a bit long. So you have about 10 to 15 minutes, okay? To fill in this strength test. And what it's gonna help highlight is your strengths, right? Personal strengths or attributes, some that you might know and some that might come as a surprise to you. Um, so I'm sharing the link with you now. Ooh, just a second. Just a second. All right, can you guys hear me? I have sent the link to the yeah, high five strength test. Yes, great. So I sent the link to the high five strength test. It is a free test. You don't need to pay for anything to take this test online. You can click on that link, right? And try and take, so just quickly take your time, but not too much time, right? You are supposed to answer these questions based on your instincts and what you think, um, you know, whether you highly agree, you agree or disagree. And at the end, of the test, it should share with you, you know, what um, your top five strengths are and highlight what your top five strengths are. So go ahead and start. Um, I will stop sharing my screen for a while to allow the DJ to play us some tunes while you fill in the test. If the tunes, if you are not pleased by the tunes, <laughs> you can just um, mute it. But if you do want to listen to the music while you take your strength test, please enjoy it. Um, but yeah, let's take the strength test. Or just one more thing, while you, after you're done taking the test, please just um, type in the chat, done. Just be like, I'm done, please, uh, so that we know when you're done. But in about 10 to 15 minutes, I will check in again to see if we can proceed. Have fun doing the test too.
Hilarious. Call her, she's not going to believe me. Hi, darling, it's the Sultan. But we're slumming it in a place called Blonde in King's Cross. You hooked up. Is this all you've got? Uh, yes. Got no lobster. Nope. No foie gras. Very little. No cockle van and I'm. Red Bull gives you wings. Hello, hello, hello. Just checking in. How far are we? Are we done? Nearly done? Only two people have said they're done, but I want to know if everyone else is still doing the personality test or if you just forgot to say you are done. It's been well over 10 minutes. I think it's been about 15 minutes. Okay, done, done, almost done. Okay, almost done. All right, I just want to gauge if you're still taking the test. Almost done. Yes, it is a little bit lengthy. Almost done. Okay. All right. How about I give uh, another three minutes? Three minutes and then we can proceed. Okay, almost. Okay, Sham's also almost done. Okay, cool, cool, cool. For those almost done, I'll give you guys the three minutes. I'm going to assume that outside, outside from those who are almost done, everybody else is done. So if you are not done, please do communicate in the chat so I know how we can move forward. Okay. Thank you. We'll give another three minutes. Over to you, DJ. I just want to get you beside me
now listening to an official Oso oh City mix. Oso oh City, que rico, papi. Right. Okay. I'm seeing a lot of dance. Okay. Great. 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 I think now we can move on and move forward. I hope everyone is done. Some people I did not see any responses from in the chat. Um, give a thumbs up, Sally. Are you done with the test, Sally? Um, who else have I not seen from Dan? Oh, lovely. Okay. Allah's done. Okay. All right. I think that's just about everyone. Okay, cool. Glad you're all done with the test um, or the uh, strength test. I hope um, you, you enjoyed taking the test despite how long it is. Um, somebody did mention saying it was very long, but worth it. Was that TK said it was very long? Um, but worth it. So I'm glad. So let me share my screen again so we can continue with our session um, where you will get a chance to now share with others, right? So we're going to be going into a breakout rooms where you'll be able to share your findings from the strength test with each other. And then also use your object as well. Remember the object, the random object that you had to go and pick in the beginning um you're going to use that object to sort of uh, help describe yourself and then see as well like was the strength test um accurate so there's three guiding questions here um first of all what were your results right so you feel free to share this information in the breakout rooms with each other and then second of all which parts were you aware of and which parts came as a shock to you so for example when i took the strength test um I got deliverer, which was like, okay, cool. That makes sense. I get that. But then I also got timekeeper and I was like, I don't know. 
I don't know. I haven't been known to be strong in the area of timekeeping, <laughs> but it did highlight maybe something about myself that I didn't know. Um, and then also, to what extent do you think these results actually describe you? Um, and also, um, to what extent do you agree with these results? And um, did your object sort of, the object that you uh, selected or picked, does that also sort of um, add to that? Does it confirm um, what the strengths test highlighted about you? Uh, so I'll just repeat myself. You're going to be in breakout rooms. We're going to get to share your findings um, with each other. So just lastly, I would like people to turn their cameras on before we go into our breakout rooms. Yes. Let us see your faces. I mean, like I'm here, you can see my face. So I want to see your faces. Um, I want to see you. If your camera can be on, would appreciate it just so we can see who you are, where you are. See your, your bright smiles um, and interact with you. Um, yes. So thank you for all to all those who are uh, turning on their cameras. Um, so they're going to put you in breakout rooms very shortly. And you will get the opportunity to share with others and get to know each other. I will pop in and out of all the other different breakout rooms. Um, so yeah. While we're putting you in breakout rooms, does anyone have any questions, concerns? No, okay, breakout rooms seem to be ready. So please join your breakout room now. Now, 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 now. Uh, hi, guys. hi guys um could we all introduce ourselves before we start again i'm regina and i'm one of the safe interns and i'll be facilitating your breakout room today hi. um Sam, hi. hi don't worry Hi. Um. Yeah. Could we all? Yeah, Jumana. Do you have anything to share? Um. So we should start with introducing ourselves, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. I can start. Thanks. Um. Okay. So uh, I'm Jumana, and uh, um, I'm an art, a digital artist. Yeah. <laughs> Just the. Say. Um, Shams, what do you do? Could you introduce yourself? Hi, hi everyone. Hi. Mm -hmm. I'm Shams from Egypt, and I'm a consultant. I'm a consultant. I have published my first book this month. So if you want to see it, it's good. Okay. I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, that's cool. I can hear you, but you're breaking a bit. So I think it's the like connection, but then we could work with that. Yeah. Um, Wayne, could you introduce yourself? I'm moving to be able to present to people in. Um, hello. Hi. Um, can everyone hear me clearly? Yeah, yeah. I can so hear um on the test um discover. Oh. Okay, you're still on the test. From the test, I discovered um I'm a storyteller. 
Should mm-hmm. I go on? Yeah, go on, go on. So I discovered I'm a, tr- I'm a storyteller and for mm-hmm. my self in introspective, I found that it, it is kind of, it's 50-50, 50% true. And I'm a peacekeeper. Um, mm-hmm. Normally, I don't engage myself in violence and I'm self, a self-believer. I believe I can reach um, my desired goals and accomplish what I want. And I'm strategic in whatever I do. And lastly, hmm. I'm a good timekeeper. You're a great timekeeper. Okay. What parts of the personality test did you know about before? And what parts were like came as a surprise to you? Um, I knew about storytelling, peacekeeping, then self-believer. Those three. Yeah. And then which parts were you a bit surprised about? Um, I was a bit surprised about timekeeper because um, it's really hard to be punctual for something. Okay, maybe it's like an aspect of yourself that you might want to explore more and like build on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, Allah. Uh, hi. Hi. Okay. Could you introduce yourself? Is- Oh, of course. Uh, my name is Ala Ayman. Um, in grade ten, and um, I just have to say what I'm interested in or what I have to say. Um, you could say, um, just briefly introduce yourself because we all have done that, and then we could continue with you. Like, what did you learn about yourself from the personality test? What were your strengths and weaknesses? Um. Okay. I'm. I just want to say that I'm interested in uh, learning computer science. And what I got in the test is he told me the um, storyteller and uh, problem solver and mm-hmm. timekeeper. Mm-hmm. Okay, were you, um, like, do your strengths, according to the personality test, do, they, do you think they align to your personality? What parts, like, did you know? Maybe you already felt you were a storyteller before, but maybe you weren't so sure you were a timekeeper. What parts were surprises to you? And what parts, like, are you already sure about that? Oh, yeah, I'm this and I'm that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's actually, yeah, I, I feel like it's describing me. And mm, I don't okay. know. Okay. So you weren't surprised about anything. Well, that's great. You're very self-aware. Yeah. Um, um, who would like to go next, Shams or Jumana? Okay, Jumana, your hand is up. Uh, okay, so when I take the test, I try to be specific and try to avoid be choosing natu- uh, neutral options. So mm. I think it become the results be specific. And the first thing was emphasizer. And I think it really um, described me as I love to make all people feel included. And I also can um, feel how people um, feel and their emotions. I really care about this. And uh, the all of things was really specific. But one thing that I don't have aware about it, which is catalyst. I don't know that I make people energize and make them like wanted to share. But yeah, it's it was really surprising for me, but I love it. <laughs> well, you. you're making me energized right now, and so I guess you really are a catalyst. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for sharing. Um, Shams, would you like to go next? Okay, I find uh, some fun facts about me. First is that uh, I'm a time giver. This is the most thing that surprise me uh, because I am not good in saving time and setting uh, uh, timetables and, li- and deadlines and like that. So the second thing is that I am uh, in the scissor, like Jumana, and I totally agree with this fact as I'm, I, al- I also, I always uh, look forward to making people uh, uh, avoid, avoid feeling like bad feelings. Yeah. Uh, and uh, third, is that I'm a catalyst 
I totally agree in, on this. I am always when I we faced a problem in uh, in teamwork or the project is gonna to uh, to be uh, uh, with a problem and uh, the team mates start to be disappointed. I find uh, me al always uh, giving them uh, energy and uh, encourage encouraging them to uh, to do best better and uh, and so on. This is all. Oh, that's very great. Thanks for sharing. I'm happy that you learned new things about yourself. You should probably, like, those are probably potential areas that you could work on and try to build on because they could help you in your life as an entrepreneur and as a leader. Um, Wayne, would you like to share lastly before we round off? Okay, wait, you actually did already share. <laughs> but is there anything anyone would like to add? Would you like to add anything before we close off with the breakout rooms? Wayne? Um, so on my introduction, I'm Wayne from Zimbabwe and I'm interested in improving the education mm. sector in Africa and also eradicating inequalities. For example, eradicating substance abuse at the same time eradicating child marriages, which are a major concern in Africa. Okay, um, could you just run us briefly through your personality test? Or have you already shared? I feel um, like you've already shared. Yeah, yes, yeah. I, yes, I have already shared. Okay, yeah. So I think that's the end right now. Um, yeah, we're being called back to the main room. So let's go back. Please remember to turn on your cameras, mute your mics, and be engaged. Thanks. Hi, everyone. We're back. We're back. We also got cut off a little bit there, but um, I hope everyone got a chance to share something about their um, strengths test that they took. Maybe I'll give space for at least one or two people to share um, with, the, with, with everyone here. What, 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 what one thing, what, what did shock you if, uh, if from the strength test? What result shocked you the most? So I shared with you guys that for me was getting timekeeper. I was actually shocked by that. Um, two people volunteer. What shocked you? Or I will call. I can cold call actually. Okay, I have a hand from Jumana. Do I have a hand from someone else as well? I would like to hear from Ton Panta as well. Okay, so Jumana, you share, and then uh, Panta Panta will share with us. So I think that the most make me show that the result was saying that I'm a catalyst to others and make everyone feel energized. And this was shock for me because I didn't notice that I do this when I'm talking and sharing my opinions. So people get energized to also share their opinions. So yeah, I think this was really, um, really make me happy that I make all people feel included and also make them uh, want to speak. That's lovely. Thank you. I think Jumana, from what I've seen so far in this session, I think that's very accurate. <laughs> and I'm glad that you're now learning that about yourself. 
Um, go ahead, uh, Ton Panta. I hope I'm pronouncing your name, Ton, 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 Ton first. Okay, thank you. Uh, I was a little bit late about uh, the, the options that were given, but I found some of the things in the game, and of which mm -hmm. one was uh, having uh, like feeling about making others happy or helping others was the main thing that I found. And mm -hmm. that thing really touched me and I really love it because I found most of my time when, I, when I'm spending it, helping others and that one actually gives me a lot of energy. So that was the thing that really shocked me when I saw that question and I reflected it to myself, I was really amazed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Love it. So I'm going to go back and uh, so we can proceed with the class or the session rather. Sorry, because I'm a teacher, I keep saying class. Um, so as you know, it is very important as young leaders for you to understand your strengths and understand where you're, how to leverage on your strengths and use your strengths, right? So for Jumana to find out that she is a catalyst and that she has the ability to motivate others and help them speak out, or for um, Don to be able to identify that he has the ability to um, make people feel more optimistic and more motivated, right? Or figuring out that you actually are a deliverer, that you get things done, or that you have a lot of self-belief, or um, if you are a philomath and you're really uh, driven by learning and, and, and growing and absorbing more information, right? So it's important for us to learn and know what our strengths are, especially as young leaders, and learn how to leverage and use our strengths um, uh, for, you know, in anything that we're doing. How do I use my strengths? How do I use my, um, and how do I leverage on my strengths? So um, while we're going into understanding ourselves as young leaders, um, we're going to just quickly go through leadership paradigms. And basically, we're going through this because it's important for us to understand what kind of leader you are, right? And what kind of leader, and that usually that speaks to your strengths as well. Okay, so um, there's different kinds of leaders out there right? We have hierarchical leadership, we have technical leadership, we have heroic, servant, situational, autocratic, and these different leadership styles speak to our strengths and how we decide to lead or in what spaces um, we get to lead or in what spaces our leadership comes out, right? So I'll quickly go through um, examples of different leadership paradigms with you guys. So, because time is not with us, I'm just realizing ooh, we're a little bit behind time, um, which is why I still don't get why I'm considered timekeeper in my person in the strength test. <laughs> so hierarchical leaders, um, who can uh, read for us quickly? So I, I, I'm tired of listening to my own voice. Dawid, our reader, our prized reader, go ahead. Okay. okay. You can just uh, read, um, uh, yeah, what the strengths of a hierarchical leader. Okay. Mm. So the hierarchical leader strength is a clear authority, which is ability to move quickly. And the weaknesses include uh, authority, authority in more given that's earn it, than earned, vulnerable to power struggles, and examples. Uh, there is Mugabe, military leaders, and many CEOs. Uh, should I continue? Yeah, you can go ahead. Okay. And the second one is a uh, heroic leader. And the strengths include inspirational and Catholic. And the weaknesses include not knowledgeable, heroic acts, lessons to relax. And the examples include Cheko Vera, Thomas Sankara. And the third uh, type of uh, leader include a technical leader. And the strengths include effective knowledge base, less likely to make mistakes, uh, and the weakness include weak in any area without no, without knowledge could be difficult to challenge. And the examples include neurosurgeon, consultant, and accountant. And the fourth uh, leader includes servant leaders, and the strengths include puts followers first and and self last, looks out for those at the bottom. And the weakness include weak and slow moving. And the examples, Jesus, Mandela, Mahatma Gandhi, and MLK. And the uh, last one, democratic leaders, a strings include 
gives everybody a voice in saying decision making and weakness. Decision making process is slow and examples of our mind can be. Yeah, so as we go through and look at like these kinds of leaders, right? So um, we we'll go back to the other slide over here. Um, back, yeah. So usually a hierarchical leader is by virtue of position or hierarchy, right? So someone who like many CEOs, right? You are, you are the lead because of your position or the situation that has given you the authority to lead. Um, usually technical leaders is because you are technically skilled, which is why we're giving examples of a neurosurgeon or consultant It's because of your skills that we, that people trust you, right? So if I came and told you, you know, I'm here, I'm a teacher, I will lead you in a particular session or lesson if I say I teach math, because that is where I'm technically skilled at. But then in any other area that I'm not knowledgeable in, I might not be so skilled. So it might be so hard, it might be difficult for me to lead in that particular area. Right. Um, if we look at servant leaders, for example, um, servant leaders, they do put others first all the time. But sometimes their weaknesses are that they because they put others forward, they might not be as strong handed. Right. Which is why they're they, it's they said they could be weak or slow. Or um, and then if we look at examples, yes, you can look at Mandela. Some might say Jesus. <laughs> Some might say MLK. Um, which is Martin Luther King. Um, and then if you look at democrat democratic leaders, they can also be slow moving because they're trying to consider every single individual's voice and trying to make sure that everyone is happy and pleased, right? Um, I'm seeing... Oh, send your full names. Okay, I saw the chat was going crazy. I was like, ooh, are we interacting? You're sending your full names. Oh. <laughs> um, so these are the different kinds of leaders. And as we go through the festival and go through this session, I want you to think about what kind of leader you wish to be or you want to be um, and where you find yourself usually. Are you usually leading because of your technical skills? Are you usually he heroic? You know, you step up to the plate. Like, for example, um, when you're called or when there's a situation calls for you to step up to the plate, um, you're willing to sacrifice or volunteer yourself. Um, I think another good example of somebody who's been a heroic leader, I think, in this chat or in this session, when the participants, I'd say, I'll say, hey, Jumana. <laughs> yeah, right. Somebody who would just say, okay, I'll, I, I volunteer as tribute, right? Um, and examples here are Che Guevara or uh, Thomas Sankara, right? Um, and I want you to think about leaders that you feel um, uh, are great leaders or leaders you, um, you think are the greatest leaders and why as you go through this process and why you admire specific leaders. Um, some might be leaders who you know personally, or some might be um, the likes of uh, Nelson Mandela or Bill Gates. Um, or Mother Teresa or Shaka Zulu, whichever you prefer, right? Um, so while we move on, when we're looking at developing our personal mission statement, right? You might be thinking, how do I come up with a purpose or how do I come down to a purpose or a personal mission that I would like to work on and continue developing? And how do I make that align with... Um, my business or my organization or my initiative. We have a thing that we call PICS here, right? So we use our passions, our interests, our skills, and focus on a particular cause or causes that we um, are passionate about and want to tap, right? So under passions, you're looking at um, Whatever it is that drives you, when you think about passions, you should think about things that move you, things that you would talk about forever. For example, I'm really passionate about film or the arts, or I'm passionate about technology, or I'm passionate about physics to be specific, or I'm passionate about politics and governance, or I'm passionate about, I don't know. So in the chat, everybody start sharing. What are some of your passions? right i'm looking at the chat and i want to see what are some people's passions 
Um, and then we dive into interests, right? So interests are things that, you know, that you're interested in, that, you know, can grab your attention, right? So for example, even though I'm passionate about film, I do have interest in environmental sustainability, but I'm not an environmentalist, but I do have interest there. I'm interested in that. I'm interested in um, maybe I would say biology or sciences sometimes here and there. I am interested. I do have interest in those fields. Um, so I'm trying to see, okay, I'm seeing people are passionate about psychology, physics, lovely, computer science. All right. Interested in art, animation, and journalism. All right. So you can have interests and then you also have what you're passionate about. So when I think about my passion for film or creative arts, that is something that I really want to spend most of my time working on. That is something that motivates me, that captures my attention immediately, right? Aerospace engineering, AI, love it. And then when you think about skills, we just did our strength test, right? So what are you good at? What do people usually tell you you're good at? Um, you know, what do you usually find yourself doing? For some people, it's public speaking. I'm really good at public speaking. Or some people, it's numbers. I'm really good at numbers. I'm not saying me. I'm terrible at numbers, but that's your case then. Great. Um, <laughs> for some people, it is um, really good at paying attention to detail or I'm very good with my hands and making things and making objects. So what are your skills, right? Why, what are your skills? What are things that people have pointed out that you're good at, right? And then causes, when we think about causes, we're looking at what are some societal structures you'd like to change, right? So for some people, it's empowering women or children or education or um, environmental sustainability. What are your causes? What are things that you are willing to spend enough time on in, time in terms of tackling, right? For some people, they'll tell you, man, I am just really passionate about mental health and encouraging youth to focus on their mental health and engaging with themselves and being more in tune with their mental health. Um, and for some, they're like, you know, that cause doesn't really suit me. I'm not really comfortable. I'm not, it's, yeah, it's there, I, but it's not something I'm motivated to engaging so maybe for them um maybe they're more interested in um fighting the cause of a maybe it's an agricultural thing or an environmental thing rather than a um okay i'm seeing helping others problem solving creative writing and singing so as we go through this process i'm going to be able to share so basically what happens is as we go through this process when you identify your passions your skills, your interests, and your causes, that should help you find an intersection where you have a personal mission or purpose, mission statement or a purpose, right? So let's use me as an example. Um, one of the things I'm passionate about, like I said, is film and creative arts, right? And um, I'm interested in um, environmental. I have interest in environmental sustainability. I'm like really interested in, and, and also environmental sustainability also falls in causes because that is a cause that I'm passionate about, like that, that, in, that piques my interest as well, right? Um, and I'm a skilled communicator. You know, I think I'm, I'm okay with my communication skills and I'd like to use my communication skills. So my purpose or my mission statement will look something like, you know, using my skills in communication and my passion for film and media um, to uh, raise awareness on environmental sustainability. That's my personal mission. So with things that I do and things that I engage in, I try and ensure that I am aligned with my personal mission because those are things that move me and things that make me happy and bring me um, that peace and joy and sense of fulfillment because I'm doing something that I'm and intentionally interested in. Okay. 
Uh, Tong, Banta, can you please uh, mute yourself? Or can you please help me mute uh, Don? Thank you. Regina, you can help me mute him. Yes, TK, this is like the Ikigai concept. Yes, it is. So if you go online, even after the session, please feel free to try and go and Google Ikigai. Sometimes Ikigai pulls in a few different elements. Um, this is like a simpler uh, version of it. Um, or you can just look at pics. The information is also available to you there on um google uncle google has the answers as well <laughs> um so you will receive a personal introduction worksheet that you can fill in um because we don't have enough time and i don't want to take too much of your time we're already going over time here um this is gonna be like homework for you guys yes so you will receive, uh, and these slides, by the way, will be in the Google Classroom. Um, but you will receive um, the introduction worksheet. And basically the introduction worksheet um, explains PICS and you're going to be able to fill it in. So you can either download or create a copy of it, right? Um, and then you're gonna fill it in um, and then we didn't get a chance to go through SMART goals, which is fine, but I'd like you to just start by understanding your picks so you can come up with a personal mission statement. We can leave the SMART goals out for now. I hope that's okay. So is everyone following? Are we all here together? Yes. So I will send a link right now to the personal introduction worksheet. I think this is just a good place to start. The personal introduction worksheet is going to allow you to put in what your passions, interests, causes, and skills are, and then you can keep that with you. And I would like you to use that as you go on with the festival, right? So that you are constantly reminded and you have a reminder and you understand what your picks are, what your passions, your interests, your causes are, and your skills, and how that creates or comes to your, uh, brings you to your personal mission or um, your mission statement. Yay. Do I have any questions, thoughts, feelings? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, thank you. All right, thank you for confirming you're good. Okay, I will be sending the link to the personal introduction worksheet. What you can do is you either download it because it's a Google Doc, right? So you could either download it or you could um, make your own copy of it, right? Do we understand? All right, so please download it or make a copy of it. For the personal introduction worksheet, you have learned something today about your strengths. You are also aware of your interests, your skills, um, and basically, I'd like you to start coming up with um, what those are so you can have your personal mission statement at the end of the day, right? We want to understand and learn more about you. So hopefully in the next session, maybe you'll get a chance to share um, this. So yeah, has everyone seen the link? I've just sent it in the chat. Yes, I've got it. Lovely. So feel free to fill it in as you please. It's, got uh, it's done. Name, surname, your um, age, an interesting fact about you. Um, then you can put it in the boxes, what your passion is, what you're passionate about, what you're interested in, causes that you're passionate about and your skills. And then, um, ooh,
and you're going to put in your purpose or mission statement. Yes. Okay, cool. All right. Um, on that note, um, I'd like to say thank you all for attending this session because I think we are over time according to the schedule. We did start a little bit late, but that's fine. Um, I'm going to try and at least stick to um, time so you guys can also have a break before your next session. Um, and you can get to stretch and then go over the worksheet if you want to, if you have some time to do so. Um, but I'd like to say thank you all for uh, sticking with me through this session and for having your cameras on, for interacting, for sharing, reading. Um, yeah. Um, so I hope this helps you or this session helps you understand yourselves a little bit more. I hope it helps you build more confidence in who you are, what you're passionate in, or what you're passionate about and um, your personal mission and hopes, I hope it helps you come up to a, a solid a, a mission statement that you wish to, that will motivate you and uh, guide you through this uh, festival. Yeah, I'm eager to see um, your BMCs and your financial plans at the end and your pitches too. Um, yeah, so shout out to everyone and thank you as well. I hope you enjoyed the session. Also, Usually want to purpose for is a lot is dense. Sorry? We also want to thank for this beautiful session. Thank you. Thank you. I'm seeing some hearts there. Thank you very much. Like I said before, you know, interacting online can be quite, uh, what's the word? <laughs> intimidating because I can't see I'm used to being with people in person um but I'm glad that you all tried your best to also interact with me and thank you I enjoyed it I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did so I'll hand over to Regina so she can share any updates about your next session what time it will start um and yeah please fill in the 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 the, the personal introduction worksheet all right I'll stop sharing my screen now. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Bye.